And I'm Emma. And this is Fanimated, <laughs> an animation fan podcast where we get a chance to geek out about our favorite animated media. And this is the 100th episode, baby. Woohoo! Celebration! <laughs> yes, we can keep geeking out, and 100 episodes is nothing. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, this seems like su- such a lot of animation talk. But I could keep going for another 500 episodes. Yeah, okay. there's always something, and the magic never ends. I I will never stop talking about animation. <laughs> <laughs> nope. So I hope you don't ever stop listening to me talk about <laughs> animation. Oh, man. Um, but today, we're actually... Um, giving you guys the microphone um, to hear what you guys have to say about animation. And I'm so excited. Um, I, I'm so grateful to everyone who sent in a submission because um, this is just going to be just a, a celebration of all of our favorite animated media. And it's so cool to actually get to geek out with you guys. Um, so thank you again for sending things in. So we're going to go through all of these lovely submissions. You'll hear some uh, voices you recognize and some you don't. Um, And we're just going to let you guys kind of lead the way on what we're discussing today. And Emma and I have some commentary on it. And we're just going to geek out with you and about all of your favorites things. So um, to get us started here, I am going to let Kate Callen lead the charge. Kelly! 100 episodes! Yay! I'm so proud of you. This is Kate, by the way. Uh, Kate Callen. If anybody doesn't know me, sometimes you can hear my voice on this podcast. But Kelly, of course I'm doing this at the last minute because that's how I roll. So it is the day of the deadline and I am doing this very last minute, but that's okay. Um, I just wanted to tell you that I am so proud of all of the hard work you've put into this podcast. It's been such a joy to watch you you know, start at the beginning with this idea and not, not being sure how it was all going to unfold and just seeing how, you know, you've grown as a host and just seeing how the podcast has grown, um, is just so exciting. And I'm so proud of you. Um, thank you so much for letting me and Laura come on together and, you know, talk about things that are not anime related, We're just two girls that love our Disney movies, and we're so thankful that you have allowed us to share that joy with other people, because, you know, it's it's always fun to kind of take a nostalgic look back and just share the things that, from our childhood, that really bring us joy, so thank you for letting us do that. Um, Things that, you know, I'm still geeking out about Disney to this day. I mean, this year we got so many... You know, we didn't get a whole lot of Disney animated movies, but we got some really great, I would say, um, feminist driven stories. You know, I'm still I'm uh, right along with the rest of the world being really in love with Encanto. I thought that movie was so beautiful. I cried so much. I think it's such a relatable story. um, And I think that's why people have really latched onto it is, you know, themes of family and identity and finding where you belong in the world and I really loved I also really loved uh Raya and the Last Dragon this year that was one of my favorite movies um and as far as favorite episodes go I think for ones that I have been on um I love talking about both of the Frozen movies with you and Laura that was just such a like fun experience um and it was really joyful and as far as episodes that I was not in um my very favorite episode was the Gravity Falls episode that you did with Gabe. Um, It was so fun hearing two of my favorite people talk about one of my favorite shows. And Kelly, you were the one who introduced me to that show. So I'm so uh, grateful that you did. And I just had a smile on my face the whole time I was listening to it. I think I texted you and said as much as soon as I was done listening. But um, again, I'm just so proud of you. And I couldn't be more excited to celebrate 100 episodes with you. Love you. Aw, that was so sweet. You know, when she just mentioned the Gravity Falls episode, it just took me back because I watched that for the first time this year. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, all the feels. That was such a good show. The Pines family. Oh, I love them. <laughs> the, yes. 
Adorkable Dipper. <laughs> yes. And I love that, Kate, you are a representative for Disney because we need that. That's part of animation. This isn't an anime podcast. It's right. animation. It's all animation, including wonderful, wonderful Disney films like Encanto. We, we don't talk about Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like Emma and I have that song stuck in our head constantly. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. But thank you so much, Kate. That's so kind. And I have absolutely loved like geeking out about Disney with with Kate and Laura and the Frozen ones especially like definitely go back and listen to those because um I'm not a, I'm not the biggest fan of Frozen but Frozen 2 Frozen 2 is amazing yes <laughs> like hits all the marks for me yeah I definitely enjoyed the Frozen episodes as well because there was just like so much detail and then it, it like influenced me to uh, watch the documentary of the behind the scenes. So that was a really fun one. So thank you, Laura and Kate, for all that you do. Yes. You can listen to the Frozen episodes are numbers 33 and 55, and Gravity Falls is number 93. And uh, I will also say, yeah, Gravity Falls was so much fun to record. It's just fun having um, other people on the show that don't get to be on as much, including Gabe. And he's a puzzle expert. So if you (laughs) like Gravity Falls, you like puzzles, that's a really fun episode. Speaking of great Disney movies, <laughs> let's uh, uh, give the mic over to Ezra. Hey there, Fanimator. I'm Ezra, and I really love your guys' show. Almost every suggestion you've given me has been enjoyable and completely worth it, so thanks a bunch. Anyways, as a big anime nut, there are many classics like Your Name or Madoka Magica that I felt like speaking about on top of many great video games, but I decided because you've covered so many of the greats already that I wanted to limit myself to a Western film this time, The Emperor's New Groove. Especially because of your recent Road to El Dorado episode, I wanted to talk about Disney's counterpart and one of the funniest animated comedies of all time. The humor in this movie flows very well, where it all feels very natural but never takes itself too seriously. Many of the jokes have have become a big part of pop culture, especially Kronk and his memes, like, oh yeah, it's all coming together. Patrick Warburton does an amazing job in that role, and none of the other voice actors slouch with comedic timing either. And yet, there's something very heartfelt about the movie, especially with how unapologetically a jerk our main character Cusco is at first. Seeing him gain a little more of an expanded worldview in this buddy comedy format is a blast. I especially like the fact that the main villain is only against Cusco because of his initial uncaring actions, something that ties into the main themes very well. Thanks again, and I hope Phantomated sticks around for a very long time. Bye. (laughs) I I, I feel like I need a reminder every day of how wonderful Kronk is. (laughs) (laughs) Kronk is amazing. (laughs) Yeah, can he be like my personal chef, please? (laughs) Please, I need him in my life constantly. (laughs) Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay, side story. I remember there was a series called Emperor's New School. It was a Disney Channel series. Oh yes, I remember that. And my cousin and I were like up until like two in the morning. It was Christmas weekend and we were watching the show. And there was this moment where Kronk just like had one of his spacey faces and just said, uh. Like, and it was just... (laughs) so funny like at 2 30 a.m in the morning that we could not stop laughing and we laughed about that for like a week and we're like what even was the line that was said and we just it was just that one reaction so (laughs) i love the series crunk classic (laughs) crunk yes emperor's new groove is so good i cry every time because i laugh so hard no joke (laughs) it is so well written it's truly phenomenal and is just like I, I'm wanting to watch it now. Like, right now. Like, <laughs> let's go. Oh, man. It's so fantastic. Oh, so good. <laughs> Classic. Thank you for sharing. Yes. Thank you, Ezra. Thank you for listening. And I, and I also hope we have lots more episodes to come. So thanks for geeking out with us. Next, we have an email that was sent in by Mila. Um, Mila says... Hi, Fanimated crew. I am such a big fan of your podcast, and my favorite animated media is either Attack on Titan or Nightmare Before Christmas. Ooh. Mm, Two good options. I love AOT because I love the storyline, and I miss, insert character name here, I'm not going to say it on the podcast because that's a spoiler, (laughs) (laughs) but a character who we all miss dearly. Um, 
Mila continues, I love Nightmare Before Christmas because it, because it has such brilliant stop motion and storytelling. I would love to hear an episode about She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. It's such a great show with amazing representation. Thank you for being such an amazing podcast. Keep doing what you do. From a huge animation fan, Mila. Oh, yes. yes, Mila. I love She-Ra. We must be strong. <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> Yes, I love, 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 love that show. It's so fun, and we do talk about it on episode 71. Um, we also talk about Attack on Titan, episode 57, which is crazy, and and uh, and with I can't say spoilers, but yeah, I miss everyone, too. <laughs> I mean, I do not watch the show, and I've listened to that episode, and it was crazy. <laughs> it, it, it gets crazier, believe it or not. Um, I do believe you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Nightmare Before Christmas is one that I've had on my list, so that could definitely be an episode someday. Yes. I appreciate the creativity of that one so much. I can't do stop motion. You can't watch stop motion I animation. I can't. I, it just, it's, here's the thing. I look at the behind the scenes stuff and I'm like, wow, this is so beautiful. Hours put into this art. It's exactly. incredible. Like, but when it all like comes together and the, the clay forms are actually moving in the film, I can't do it. It's, it's just <laughs> too terrifying to me. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> but I can appreciate it. Yes. I am Every time we talk about a stop motion film, and we just recently talked about Fantastic Mr. Fox, um, it I it just blows my mind the production um, that goes into these films. And seriously, it's, it's true with every animated film, right? It's like so detail specific, but it's, it's something about like physical objects. These it's like little crafts, and you have to move them all, and like the way that they. <sighs> They have to organize that just boggles my mind. And I have so, so much um, respect for artists who do that. Seriously, all the time that goes into that, I can't, cannot imagine, like, working that job. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Ugh. So thank you, Mila, for sending that in. I'm so glad you're listening to the podcast and you're also a stop motion animation fan. Speaking of um, Attack on Titan... Here's a little snippet from another Attack on Titan fan. What is up, Kelly? It is Perry from the podcast Banter I Hardly Know Her. And I just want to say congratulations on reaching 100 episodes all time. That is super impressive. I mean, if you're doing one episode for every year of the 100 Years War, I mean, it would take basically 0.86 episodes a year for the whole 100 years. That's pretty incredible uh, because we all know that 100 Years War was uh, 116 years. To further put it in perspective, you basically have done one episode per pound of the average baby hippopotamus at birth. That is just so impressive and worth some congratulations. There are just so many episodes of your show that I really have enjoyed. I mean, obviously, the Treasure Planet episodes really sticks out to me. You had such a knowledgeable guest on that episode and um, just incredible uh, informational podcast learning about uh, Treasure Planet, the great film um, from Disney. And... I remember loving your Avatar The Last Airbender episode, and it inspired us at Banter I Hardly Know Her to do a two-hour special of our own on the show. I love your episodes on the How to Train Your Dragon series, and just in general, you've always given great recommendations on animation and on anime. I'm watching Attack on Titan right now because of some of your recommendations. So I just wanted to say congratulations from us at Banter I Hardly Know Her on reaching 100 episodes all time <laughs> okay so those stats about the hippo like what <laughs> of course perry would put that out there yeah um, we, we were we, we were too busy laughing about the hippopotamus <laughs> <laughs> oh I, I thank you so much perry um it's just been uh, an absolute blast getting to be on on banter i hardly know her and um having you on the show here at fanimated as well um and everyone go listen to banter i hardly know her I, they do a ton of movie stuff. Like, a lo uh, if you want to, like, delve deeper into, like, Marvel Universe things or, like, classic, you know, live action stuff or, like, anything. They talk about all sorts of crazy stuff. They do a lot of fun Disney um, movie things. And uh, they, they come up with some pretty wild fun ideas. So go check out those episodes because they're <laughs> great. Yes, I think one of my favorite episodes was, like, 
uh, Disney characters in the Hunger Games yes! game. That was so fun. That was wild. <laughs> it's like pitting all these Disney characters against each other. And that was really yes. fun. Yeah, yeah. And yes, Perry, you were fabulous on Treasure Planet. It was a great episode. So thank you for that as well. Yes, the Treasure Planet episode is number 58, so if you want to hear more from Perry, check it out. We're going to move on to another very familiar voice. Um, so we'll take it away, Jamie Krause. Hello, my name is Jamie Krause for the 100th episode of Fanimated. Honestly, this is going to be no surprise to anyone, but it's Big Hero 6. It's the uh, first thing I was lucky enough to talk about on the show. And it's it's definitely one of my favorite movies I've ever seen. It's one of my favorite stories. Um, just a super short version. Um, I saw it once, and I thought it was a really fun, cute, wholesome movie. I saw it a couple more times, and I started like realizing that there were more and more layers to uh, how interesting the hero and villain setup of that movie was. I was just absolutely floored by how weird you could think about it and how much you could read into it. And that was... You know, as far as animated movies go, that was just the bonus on top of the uh, the action and the humor and the characters and everything else. I was just really absolutely enamored with it. And uh, I loved getting to talk about it, yeah. Um, let's see here. Favorite episode of Fanimated? It's got to be the um, top ten intros, top ten anime intros with, uh, I think it was Kelly and Emma on that one. And that was just so much fun to... Uh, listen to you guys going back and forth trying to guess the lists and like which uh, series would be which number and stuff and <laughs> getting getting to talk a uh, super short burst getting to talk about like uh, why you like this opening why you like these characters why you like these music uh, this music stuff like that absolutely a ton of fun to listen to and there would be like a couple on the list maybe three or four where i would suddenly sit up like wait a minute i know this one i can answer this one and i could like figure out which anime it was you know um didn't happen every time but just a <laughs> just a couple of them and that was so much fun to listen to uh just absolutely a delight um and it was funny it was genuinely like you guys have such a great uh rapport for sure and you're <laughs> you're getting, getting annoyed with yourself when you can't think of it but it's like right on the tip of your tongue um that was such a cool idea for this show uh, yeah, if we're talking favorite normal episode, um, I think I would go with the one for Weathering With You. Uh, I had seen that movie not super long before I listened to the episode, so it was still very fresh in my mind. And, I don't know, getting listened to y'all, like, not just talk about the the movie itself and the animation, although that's a huge part of it, but getting to talk about the story going on in that movie and, like, how the director had... Um, taken things from the previous movie and like changed or improved on them and how just what an what an absolute experience it was to watch it you know and of course it's a, <laughs> a movie that couldn't be more timely because like like you guys were talking about just absolutely a a potential disaster not too different from some things that are on everybody's mind in in the last couple of years you know and the I don't know, something about that movie is just very special to me, and hearing you guys give your insights on it and just kind of talk about how much of an emotional journey it was, uh, it kind of made me feel like I was watching it again, you know? And there was something really, really wonderful about that. Uh, I'm going off script a little bit, but I just... Fanimated has just been such a fun show, honestly. Like, I will admit that I wasn't listening to every single one from the beginning, but at some point in the last couple of years, I just, like started grabbing every new one that was popping up on my feed, you know? And soon I found myself listening to every week or every uh, every couple weeks, as the case may be. And obviously it's been a ton of fun to jump on a few episodes and be a co-host for a little bit and talk about some of the random stuff that I absolutely love. And I sort of can't imagine not having this show around now, if that makes sense. Um, and it's just been a good time. I couldn't be more uh happy with how the production has turned out i couldn't be more proud of kelly for all the work she's put in like th i don't know there's just something really wonderful about this whole this whole production and i'm a big fan um yeah i think that's about it thanks for listening jamie jamie Krause. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Yeah, literally, I'm just like, okay, I'll just go cry now. Just go in a corner and cry, I guess. <laughs>
Um, thank you so much for your kind words. Thank you for being on the show. Um, also for writing the new the intro. intro. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your wonderful talents and your enthusiasm for animation and bringing it onto the show. Um, we're just very happy to have you around. Um, the anime openings episode is also one of my favorites. That's episode yes. 53. Recording those is wild. Editing them is a nightmare. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, I would agree. That's definitely one of my favorites. Yes, I would agree, too. Like, those were so much fun. Because, one, it was just, like, a game and we are guessing. And yeah. so it was surprising and whatnot. But, you know, it's just... It's fun to, like, take a break and just, like, focus on the music aspect and instead of, like, a whole entire show. And so I had a ton of fun with those episodes. I'm yeah. glad you enjoyed them, too. And hopefully you could laugh a little bit in the car as both of us were on the struggle bus <laughs> at moments. So Yes. <laughs> uh, we hope to do lots more anime top ten lists because yes. they're very fun. <laughs> yes. And Weathering with You. Oh, e- Episode man. number 69. Ugh. You just talking about that, Jamie, just re- takes me back to that recording, and I remember exactly where we were, and it was just a very beautiful moment for both of us, like, because we were really just pouring out our hearts about, like, how this movie impacted us emotionally, and it, you're right, it's just a very relevant thing, and, oh, it was, it was a tearjerker one <laughs> for me. Yes, I still remember recording that episode and it's one of those great examples of what I, part of what I love about the podcast is that we're sitting down and we're delving deep into deep topics and we're like verbally processing and having these revelations about not only the film and what the films are trying to say, but also just about life and like, yes. cause like stories are how we understand each other and stories are how we understand ourselves. And so getting to like delve deep into all of these films has just been a really really fascinating like journey into like just discovering our own philosophies and like yeah discovering you know what we agree with or what we um what challenges us you know and weathering with you was definitely one of those episodes and I absolutely love it yeah that just shows you the beauty of storytelling and that's what makes me so excited about all the geeking out we get to do ahead because with each new story we get a new piece of the puzzle of life you know (laughs) yes absolutely and of course i absolutely absolutely adore big hero six now because of you jamie (laughs) um that was actually our second ever episode of fanimated was big hero six and from the very beginning of Fanimated, I definitely, like, I wanted a space where I could geek out about my favorite things, but I also wanted to hear other people's opinions, just like in this this episode where I get to hear everyone's favorite things. And so Big Hero 6 was that, ep- the, that first episode for me of like, okay, I want to, this is a foundation of Fanimated that... I went into that episode not liking the movie at all. Like, it felt like a How to Train Your Dragon ripoff to me. And go listen to it, because Jamie (laughs) completely shatters that belief. Yes. (laughs) And and really proves that there's a lot more going on there. And, And that's what I love, too, is that, you know, stories will hit us at different times and different places in our lives and impact us in different ways and so even if there's a movie that's not my favorite it's somewhere out there it's someone else's absolutely favorite film and it hit them at just the right time and said Mm -hmm. just the right thing and and was exactly what they needed and I I I absolutely love that Mm -hmm. and so thank you Jamie for sharing your passion for Big Hero 6. Yes thank you so much We love you. We love you. (laughs) And we're not the only ones who really liked that episode, as our next guest will say. Ooh, good segue. Hi, everyone. I'm guest host Nathan, and happy 100th episode. I'm from Minnesota, like many of the guests on this show. And my favorite episode is episode two, Big Hero 6 with Jamie. I loved Jamie's analysis and engagement with the film, I had come away from watching Big Hero 6 the first time as just, meh, that was good, I guess. It was a nothing movie to me. 
But Jamie really looked at the characters and thought about it more critically. He came onto the podcast to wow Kelly with a new perspective. The idea that Hero wasn't really a hero, but much more like the villain than any other character was amazing. I found that episode about a movie I sort of took for granted very interesting, and it's something I try to emulate when preparing for some of my episodes. Now, I didn't write an essay for any of my episodes, but I try to bring some critical thinking and more media analysis along. For my favorite animated media, this is the perfect opportunity for a Nathan's only video game version of Fanimated, since I'll probably never get a chance to talk about my favorite video game, Bioshock Infinite. It came out around 2012-2013 and was the most beautiful video game I had ever seen. I still think it's one of the best looking games ever created. It's the third game in the Bioshock franchise. In the first two games, you are whisked away to a creepy underwater city called Rapture. But in this one, you get shot into the air to the beautiful city of Columbia. We follow the story of a man named Booker DeWitt, who is tasked to find the girl and wipe away the debt. You find yourself in this isolated utopian society living on huge zeppelins in the sky. They honor the founding fathers of America like gods. Everything is sparkling and new. I replay the first half hour of this game all the time to recreate that initial shock of stepping into this glorious city. It's extra impactful when compared to the first two Bioshock games, which were gritty and dark. Everything seems perfect up here in the clouds, but of course it isn't. Things go awry quickly as you and Elizabeth, the girl you've been tasked to retrieve, are chased throughout this so-called utopia. Time travel, multiverse, and high-paced gunfights follow you until the climactic end. I truly think this is one of the best games ever animated, written, or played. Thank you all for listening to over a hundred episodes. I hope you've enjoyed them, and keep listening to whatever comes next for Fanimated. Thank you, Nathan. That's so sweet. Yes. Did you know you have a great podcast voice? You should be like a radio host or something. Oh, uh, new, a new podcast coming called uh, Nathan's Video Games. Or, uh, <laughs> or a cooler name than that. A cooler name than that. You can uh, figure that out. <laughs> Well, thank you for bringing up a video game, Nathan. It's really good to hear another piece of media because we love our video games on this <laughs> podcast, but we don't talk about them enough. We don't. We don't talk enough about enough video games. And part of the problem is that I, I can never finish a video game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Kelly and I spent way too long just finishing Hyrule Warriors like the other month or whatever. And I mean, granted, we went at it really slowly, Very but it, slowly. it, yeah, that is the reason why it <laughs> takes so long. I mean, yeah, we've been working on that for several years. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh, that's, that's our pace in video games. Mm-hmm. Um, but of course, Nathan's played a lot of video games. And so hearing about Bioshock Infinite, it makes me want to play it. Like that description sounds really cool. Yeah, it sounds fascinating and beautiful by your terms. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, Who knows where Fanimated will lead? Maybe I will eventually play Bioshock games. I mean, you watch hundreds of episodes of anime. I can watch it. Should be possible. Yeah, play hundreds of hours of video games instead. (laughs) Exactly. That's how it works. Right. (laughs) Next up, we have an email sent in from Elia. They say, I'm a big fan of the Tales of Arcadia trilogy. I had watched it on a whim back in 2020, just after Wizards released. Since then, I've had a sweet spot for the series. I love everything about the series, from the animation to the plot and story. The concept art and storyboards are beautiful and amazing. Still hoping DreamWorks decides to make an art book for Three Below and Wizards. I need that concept art, don't we all? (laughs) Even after the series concluded eight months ago with Rise of the Titans, which the fandom kind of hated, whoops. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The fandom is still very much alive. One of the artists behind the series, Tenny Isakanian, a storyboard artist for Wizards, still draws art for the series. Her art is gorgeous. Go check it out if you're a fan of Duxie. Side note, I am a fan of Duxie, incredibly so, (laughs) and I do follow her art on Instagram. It's fantastic. Please go do that. Elia continues, my personal favorite part of the series would have to be Troll Hunters. The voice acting, the animation, the story, and the characters are all amazing. We're going to be here for hours if I continue geeking out over Tales of Arcadia, so I'll just stop here. Congrats on having 100 episodes. Here's to more episodes to come. 
Thank you, Elia, for sharing. That's so sweet. That's so sweet. And yes, yes, absolutely. Huge, huge fan of Tales of Arcadia series. Troll Hunters especially. It's just like absolutely steals my heart every time. I, I love it so much. And Wizards too is just so adventurous and fun. Three Below is like the sci-fi element coming in. It's just like fans of all sorts will enjoy the, this trilogy because there's a little bit of something for everyone. Yeah, and you know, I personally don't um, watch this trilogy, trilogy or I haven't, um, but I really love to see like through Kelly basically um, like all these emails come through and the different episodes on the podcast um, it's really fun to see all these people come together and geek out about this because I think that's one of the most beautiful things about this celebration here is that um, we all can just become a community over something we love so dearly, something that we find magical. And so it's just really fun to see the community, the community that's built around this particular trilogy. Yes, and I love that community so much. Um, you can listen to our Troll Hunters episode, uh, episode number 30, and I have a special guest that came in to uh, talk to me about wizards on episode 65. Troll Hunters is actually still the highest downloaded episode of Fanimated. Wow. The most downloads. That's impressive. It is impressive. There are lots of Troll Hunters fans out there. <laughs> we well, are you came to the right place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, now we have another very passionate, invested animation nerd to share her thoughts. Hello, my name is Janice. I'm from Minnesota, and there's two animated media that I really like. The movie Kung Fu Panda and its sequels, and the anime series Demon Slayer. And I love them both for a lot of the same reasons. One is I really like the heroes in both. I really resonate with both of them. And they're not always fitting the usual hero archetype. So it's fun to see how that plays out. And it's refreshing. And both Poe and Tanjiro just have really great character development as they continue to improve on their fighting skills and struggle to understand their destinies. Um, so they're, they're fun characters to watch. Two, the animation is really fun to watch. They, Kung Fu Panda is mostly CGI and Demon Slayer is mostly hand-drawn, uh, though they both incorporate other animation techniques and styles as well. And so it's fun to see the different kinds of media intertwine. Both animation is colorful and bright and stimulating, and the action sequences particularly are super fun to watch. The cinematography is fun. Uh, the choreography is well thought out. And you can tell that a lot of care is put into the animation. Um, even small things like a forest in autumn or a sunset, even those things are like super pretty third thing I really like about both is the humor. It's irreverent because it's just so goofy and sometimes doesn't make any sense. Uh, you can tell that the writers and animators just had fun with the jokes and the slapstick, especially when both can get into very dark and solemn themes such as um, genocide, murder, hey, no big deal. <laughs> so it's just nice that it's not that both media will address those issues in a, in a serious way, but in the end just not take themselves too seriously, because they'll just throw in all this humor. Other reasons why I like both of these media 
you've got great music all the way through, um, you've got really great voice acting, uh, the side characters are a lot of fun, uh, the storyboarding's great, both of these meter are just made really well, and I just really appreciate that. So, yeah, Kung Fu Panda and Demon Slayer. As for my favorite fanimated episode, I would pick the short episode that was done on Imara. It's an animated, super short animated series. It's It has its own YouTube channel you can watch for free, last I knew. And it's from, it was... Uh, created by a woman, and it's from the United Arab Emirates. And it's just so cool that the show talked about something like that that you would otherwise probably never hear about. Because it's a superhero show from the Middle East in Arabic about a girl superhero. And it's just a lot of fun. Uh, I So after I watched that episode or listen to that episode, I went and watched the show on YouTube, and I was like, this is so cool to just learn about something you would never really hear about. So, thanks, Fanimated, for taking some time to talk about that show. That was fun. Janice, I love your passion for Demon Slayer. It's my favorite. Yes! <laughs> I, we used to be roommates uh, for folks out there who don't know, and we always geeked about uh, Demon Slayer, and we would jam to the opening intro <laughs> all the time. It was the yes. best. Um, and just going to the movie to see it together was so, so fun. So I'm, I'm just loving your passion for Demon Slayer. And I also love Kung Fu Panda. It is amazing. Kung Fu Panda is incredibly underrated. Yes. It, I, like the soundtrack? Oh my oh, god. Oh, the feels. Oh. <laughs> and like the like cinematography and like the animation of some of those fight scenes is top tier yeah. action animation quality. And it's like a panda. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a very fat panda. Who we um, all love. We all love so much. Um, so thank you for sharing your excitement. We have yet to do a Kung Fu Panda episode. That, that needs to be added to my list. Yes. Uh, Dreamworks fan over here. Gotta love it. Um, we have talked about Demon Slayer multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> and more to come. <laughs> um, episodes number 45 and 86. So, um definitely check those out if you're also a fan of Demon Slayer and need to geek out about Demon Slayer a little more because I do all the time. <laughs> Watch out, Emma. We're going back into stop motion animation land. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so Nolan will take it from here. Hi, Kelly. I'm Nolan. I live in the wonderful state of Michigan. And if I really thought about it, I think I'd have to say that my favorite piece of animated media is the movie Coraline. I watched it when I was 10 years old and it just, it just did it for me, you know, like the moment when you watch a movie and it just, the animation is really good and the story is really good and the characters connect with you and it just works for you. For me, that was Coraline and I really connected with the main character. I loved the stop motion animation and I just watch it all the time. I watch it every year around Halloween and I'm really hoping you guys will make an episode about it at some point. And, um... As my favorite fan animated episode, I think it would have to be the How to Train Your Dragon ones because I really do love How to Train Your Dragon. It's one of my top movie series too, but just the passion you guys have for it and listening to you guys just absolutely lose your minds about some of the favorite things that I have in it too. It just makes me so happy and I always just love those episodes and I really love this podcast. I've been listening to it for years and it just always makes me happy when I listen to it. Thank you guys. Oh, Nolan, that was so sweet. Ah. Yes, like, just, like, when a movie hits you at the right time and, like, the characters resonate with you like that, like, that's that's how I feel about How to Train Your Dragon. <laughs> yes. Also, I just love that you mentioned the fact that, like, it, it feels really good to um, hear somebody geek out about something that you like to geek out about. 
um, and how it like connects you. And that's what's so special about what we're doing right now is because now we get, as like hosts, get the benefit of the other way around because yeah. you know you're creating the medium or the media constantly with your podcast, Kelly. And um, you know it's really awesome to like you know connect with a story and talk about it. Um, and you know, if I'm listening to in the car, I connect with it, but now I get to connect with the listener too. Like we actually have the back and forth because we're hearing from them. So yes. I love it. Anyway. I love it so much. And Coraline is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, I'm a huge fan of anything like a, and all of their films are fantastic. I absolutely want to talk about it on the podcast sometime. I want to talk about all the Leica films on the podcast sometime. <laughs> um, but Coraline is definitely, definitely way up there in, in some really phenomenal stop motion animation. Um, I will take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Emma's going to sit this one out. But, <laughs> um, but yes, oh, it's so good to hear that that's like um, a really important movie for you and I'm going to take this like as an opportunity to talk about my favorite animated film since um, you did us the honors of introducing the How to Train Your Dragon into the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we talked about the entire trilogy, episodes 5, 42, and 78. If you haven't listened to them, um, you can hear me geek out even more. Um, and I've kind of got this tradition going that every March we talk about the film or the franchise in some way, um, which I'm excited to continue later this month with a new How to Train Your Dragon episode, something that I've never done on the podcast before, so piquing your interest. What does she mean? What is it? <laughs> what? You'll the, find out. In just a few weeks. <laughs> um, but yes, How to Train Your Dragon is my favorite animated film. Um, not because I think it's the best animated film or it's like everyone has to watch this film, but because just like with Nolan and Coraline, it hit me at just the right time. I resonated with the character so much. Um, Hiccup's story resonated with me so deeply and throughout the entire franchise, I feel like I've grown up with Hiccup and Del, every movie that came out, like I was dealing with the same things he was dealing with, like uh, additional responsibilities or having to say goodbye to people. And the first film, especially, just like I remember, I was in high school and I was in this very insecure place of like, oh, I love animated movies so much. This is weird. I'm 16. I shouldn't be obsessed with movies and these movies anymore. I'm 28, okay, and I still love them, and I'm going to love them when I'm 85. Yes. Like, <laughs> but at the time, like, I was really struggling with that, and so then this movie came, and I was just like, I love it so much, and I don't, re I don't care that I love it, and it's a kid's movie or whatever. Um, and it was the first movie that, like, I it really hit me like, oh yeah, no, people make this. Like people, there are people out there, this is their job. And I, it, 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 How to Train Your Dragon is what got me into like geeking out about production of animation and figuring out how it works and, and delving into an internet community of people that love the same thing as you. And that's what I love about Fandomated <laughs> is that we can continue that, you know? Um, and it, it was truly like my first real like internet fandom was How to Train Your Dragon. Mm. Um, and it really was a big catalyst in my nerddom life. <laughs> um, and so it has a lot of specific memories for me, but also it truly is a fantastic film and a beautiful story. And like this, the journey of Hiccup and Toothless throughout the franchise is just so beautiful and it makes me so happy and also sad. <laughs> Yes, it's so good, as we've talked about on the podcast. And I love how passionate you are about How to Train Your Dragon, because it is incredible. And when you love something so much, you just can't help but talk about it. And I think that's something to be celebrated. Thank you. Um, speaking of celebrating all the things we love, Emma, what's your favorite animated media? <laughs> So when Kelly asked me this, it was a very, very hard decision. Um, we've talked about so many things on the podcast that I'm very passionate 
a lot of you know that I love anime. Um, <laughs> so that's like my, my big area of interest. But after like some consideration, I'm going with some recency bias. So um, I, I know I've seen a lot of animation throughout my years, but this one has just been my heart and soul lately. And so that's why I'm picking it as my favorite animated media. And that would be The Dragon Prince. Yes. The Dragon Prince is a series on Netflix, uh, same writers from Avatar The Last Airbender. And this show is just my joy because it is fantastical and it's adventure and it's fun. And it gives you like the heart and soul vibes of Avatar The Last Airbender, but the world is a little bit different. Um, I just can't help but feel so connected to one of the protagonists, Rayla, who's a Scottish elf. Like, I mean, I just like, <laughs> this gal is my spirit animal. Um, and so um, just watching this show has been such a joy. I mean, like literally people, I've watched this series five times within a couple of years. So um, I'm pretty, pretty uh, nerdy about the subject. <laughs> um, and I really love that it's a franchise that connects with all of us who are nerds because, like, there are so many references throughout the series that if you're a nerd, you're going to pick up on them. Um, or, if, or, like, if you are aware of, like, certain things in different um, geekdoms, like <laughs> Star Wars or Lord of the Rings or whatever. Um, and so... This is just one of those shows that I was like, oh, this show is created for people like me. <laughs> like, people who love this kind of stuff. And it's for nerds. It's for nerds. <laughs> and, like, I have always been a huge fan of fantasy and adventure. I love magical worlds. And so this fits it pretty well with that description. Um, but, yeah, The Dragon Prince has been such a fun show. I've been so attached, and I can't wait for more to come. Oh, and uh, I can't wait either. <laughs> I'm so excited and nervous. And, like, I'm like, there's going to be a time jump. Like, how yep. far? What is the time jump? Yeah, what's the time and jump? And, like, so many characters that are so lovable, and you're like, how are they going to change? How are they going to grow? My babies. <laughs> yes, they are. There are babies. We've watched them go through some really tough stuff, and I want the best for them, as is a sweet baby precious cinnamon <laughs> roll, and I want him to be okay. <laughs> uh, and I want Rayla to truly believe in herself and love herself for who she is. Yes. Anyway, go listen to that episode if you want to hear more, because we could go on forever. <laughs> We have just a couple more entries before we wrap things up. Um, so let's hand the mic over to Laura with something very different. Hi, Fanimated. Hi, Kelly. Congratulations on your 100th episode. What an amazing achievement. This is Laura. You guys usually hear me on the podcast geeking out with Kelly about Disney films, but I had to send in a note today to geek out about a very different type of animated film, um, and that is the movie 300. Uh, Zack Snyder's 300 is an adaptation of Frank Miller's graphic novel. It came out in 2006 when I was in high school. It's the story of the Battle of Thermopylae, um, the Battle of the 300 Spartans. And I, I don't even know how to describe the impact that this film had on me. This film was really, really groundbreaking in its use of CGI technology. When I say groundbreaking, the thing that I think is the coolest about it is that it didn't really utilize any new technology. It used the same technology they had been using in Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, those types of films that really created fantasy worlds for real actors to live in. But instead of going for 100% realism, they created a very clearly animated world that mimicked the graphic novel and then put real actors into that world. It's extremely stylized. It's extremely graphic. It's the graphic novel brought to life. It's just, I didn't know movies could be like that when I saw it. And it's 100% the animation that makes the film. 
by today's standards, it definitely is not something that would blow your mind. But when you saw it in 2006, it was so different. It was so new. And I really, really feel that when you watch it, you can see the influence of movies that heavily use CGI and created new worlds moving forward. 300 changed the game. There were several others around that time that did the same thing, Sin City, Sky Captain, and the World of Tomorrow. But 300 was such a huge success both in the box office and as sort of like a cult film that people still just absolutely love and talk about. I'm one of them. Um, If you have not seen 300, I highly encourage you to see it. It is rated R and it is a very graphic film. Uh, So it's not for everyone. But if you are into that type of thing, definitely watch 300. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like I said, it's not necessarily going to blow your mind by today's standards, but if you put yourself back in that world of 2006 and imagine what it was like to see that in the movie theater before we had Marvel, before we had all of these awesome CGI movies that we have now, imagine what it was like to see that for the first time, to live in that world and to experience that on screen. One of my absolute favorite films. Thank you, Laura. Yes, good to hear from you. Yes, oh, it's always so fantastic to geek out about just like film in general with Laura. Laura has like such a passion for cinematography and good story. And it's like, we always get into these deep discussions about these live action films where I'm like, this feels like it could be a fanimated episode, except it's live action. (laughs) (laughs) Because we can get just as nerdy and geeky about um, non-animated things too. And um, 300 is a film I actually haven't seen yet. I have not either. So maybe I'll have to have a movie night and Laura can uh, (laughs) commentate for us. (laughs) That would actually be so awesome. It's super fun. Laura, I love how you always are interested in items that like aren't necessarily like the the most popular thing like I mean obviously 300 was very popular yeah not trying to say it wasn't but like you always choose items that I don't even think about and so I love hearing your perspective it's so fun yes just like we were talking about with Big Hero 6 like um I really love hearing people who love something that maybe isn't as popular like uh Laura brought up um Avatar The Last Airbender um, the live the movie, action yeah. film mm-hmm. and so we have an episode to, talking about that even though it's not technically fully animated because like it kind of paired well with our Avatar The Last Airbender uh, series discussion and it's so so fun to like hear like all of these really great aspects of something that like I uh, you know pushed to the side for so long so um so yeah I don't know like (laughs) Laura and I have talked really deeply about like how how we could possibly talk about um like CGI animation on the podcast and we've we've had some very serious discussions about that um because you know so many movies now we joke that they're all animated because like like every Marvel movie you see is actually an animated film. Um, And there's so much like cool stuff to talk about in terms of production of CGI animation and like how, you know, maybe in some time we'll talk a little bit about like the history of that or, you know, dive into things like Jurassic Park or like, you know, films Mm -hmm. that really had a huge impact on the CGI animation industry. so so that's always a possibility and something that I like to, who knows, in the next 100 episodes of Fanimated, maybe we'll uh, dive into that a little more. Thank you for sharing, Laura. Thank you, Laura. You're awesome. You know who else is awesome? Me? <laughs> yes, you. <laughs> Stop. But also, <laughs> our next guest who has a lot of awesome things to say about Tangled. Hi, everyone. My name is Leandra. Um, I have been listening to the Fanimated podcast since 2018. Um, I was originally introduced to Kelly and her amazing friends through the Voltron Legendary Defender episodes. I remember I was going to be on a plane for a few hours and I had just gotten into the whole world of podcasts and I had also 
just recently finished um, the final season of Voltron Legendary Defender. And I was like, this might be a cool like thing to look up because I had some questions and things that I um, didn't really understand. I was like, I wonder if the podcast could kind of answer those for me. Um, so I found Fanimated through that and immediately just fell in love with the Fanimated podcast. Um, I especially have fallen in love with um, fan art Fridays because I love fan art. I cannot draw for the life of me, um, but I love seeing um, other people's talents and how they share that. So thanks, Kelly, for keeping up with those fan art Fridays because it is a great way to end the week. My favorite form of media is TV movies. Um, I always love a good movie, TV show, always looking for new recommendations. But my favorite movie of all time, and it will always be my favorite movie of all time, is Tangled. I remember at the age of seven watching Tangled over and over and over again in my living room. Um, I don't know why I loved it so much as a child. I think now I still continue to love it because as a college student who has gone through COVID um, and gone through, you know, a sense of isolation And feeling trapped just not only in my home because of COVID, because of the original quarantine back in 2020, but that anxious feeling of feeling trapped inside of my own body that I I wasn't in control of what I was feeling. And it was just awful. And, you know, I feel like I connect with Rapunzel in a sense because, you know, she was trapped in a tower for 18 years of her life. She had the same routine every single day. And she lived it with such joy. But she still wanted to see the outside, which, I mean, makes sense. Like, she has a sense of adventure. We all do deep down inside of us. So I feel like now that's why I continue to connect with Tangled. I really love the Tangled franchise because they didn't just stop with Tangled in 2010. Then came Tangled Ever After. Then came Tangled Before Ever After. And the most recent even though now it's done, is being Tangled the Series. Tangled the Series is probably one of my favorite parts of the Tangled franchise, other than the original movie, just because I love that storyline. Um, it was just so intriguing. It was filled with so many twists and turns, so many unexpected ideas. Um, also, the music, you guys. The music throughout the entire Tangled franchise is just incredible. Mandy Moore and Zachary Levi, you guys, they are incredible, incredible actors, um, and just incredible singers, too. Like, I never knew Zachary Levi could sing until I heard him sing in At Last I See the Light, and I was like, oh, wow, love this man. Anyways, I love the music so much that I have already decided at the age of 19 that I will be walking down the aisle to an instrumental version of At Last I See the Light. It's going to happen. And I'm really excited about it. Um, but another little fun fact, um, from Tangled the Series came a lot of new music. And it's all on my Spotify on repeat playlist because I listen to it over and over and over again. Like, it's that good. Tangled will always hold a special place in my heart. Um, I have little Tangled knickknacks and Tangled theme items all throughout my dorm room and my room at home. And it has just been a joy to listen to Kelly and her friends also talk about their love for the Tangled franchise because, oh, I just feel that connection. Like, I love it. Agree with, like, every single thing that they say. So if you haven't listened to those episodes, definitely go check them out. Kelly, happy 100th episode. I am so thankful for this opportunity um, to just be featured in this episode. Like, this, this is a dream come true. I absolutely adore this. You're incredible. I cannot wait to continue geeking out with you via Instagram over all of our shared interests. And I am so thankful that I came across your podcast. Leandra, thank you so much. That was truly the most beautiful message. And I like... What you can't see is Emma and I nodding ferociously at everything you're saying. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, our reactions, like, oh my gosh, yes. yes. Like, 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 Voltron, yes. Tangled, yes. Tangled the series, yes. yes. <laughs> I love Zachary Levi, Zachary yes. Levi yes. 
<laughs> what a man. What a man. We what a love voice. Him. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> yes. And oh, thank you so much for listening for so long and geeking out with me on Instagram. It's just such a joy to just be like, blah, for Tasket. <laughs> or blah, yes. <laughs> dangled. Um, and so. Uh, Thank you so much for, for listening and for sending that in. Truly, Tangled is one of the best films. Like, Yeah, <laughs> that was like in my top list as far as favorite animated media because Tangled, like just like you, Leander, like huge impact on both of our lives. Like, And I love that you shared that connection. So thank you. Absolutely. And Tangled, the series is seriously just as oh, good as the movie. Oh, so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's just, it's so rare we, that you get to see, like, such a deeper look into these characters. And and it's like you get to three whole seasons. It's like three whole movies of Tangled again. And you get to see Rapunzel and Eugene's relationship develop. You get yes. to see all these new characters and how they, like, fit into the story. And, like, Rapunzel really does to, like deal with a lot of new challenges mm-hmm. and it's really phenomenal so i mean we we loved the tangle series so much <laughs> i have three animated episodes no more i have a lot of tangles episodes <laughs> Um, uh, number 35, we talk about Tangled. Um, number 47, we talk about Tangled the series. And there's another one in there where I, uh, chat with all things Tangled with, um, another, uh, prominent (laughs) Tangled fandom, um, (laughs) nerd. So, uh, we've got a lot of Tangled on this podcast (laughs) for good reason, because we love it. And I'm so glad you do too. And I'm so glad you found the podcast um, and that we can all just keep geeking out. <laughs> yes, we love Tangled so much. And it's so good to hear from you. I also love that you mentioned Voltron as you're like way into this podcast. Because yeah. that is like a throwback. Because I remember watching that as it came out. Yes. And how we would like watch the episodes and then record a little bit and then watch the episodes and record. Oh my gosh, that was so fun. Yeah, that was definitely um, super fun to try, like doing little snippet episodes like mm-hmm. that. <laughs> um, and our original Voltron episode was episode number eight. So that is really early. That yep. is one of the very <laughs> early episodes. Right. <laughs> it's funny, we're talking about all these early episodes and I don't go back and listen to, well, most episodes <laughs> because it's like kind of weird to listen to your own voice. But it's, <laughs> especially the old old ones because like after a hundred episodes we've changed as hosts like Mm -hmm. um it's it's wild to go back and listen to those older ones and like we didn't know what we were doing we still don't but uh, things have changed a lot in the last 100 plus episodes and it's been a crazy wild ride. There have been a lot of ups and also a lot of downs. Like you don't, you know, see a lot of it from behind the scenes because, um, you know, it's just you get to hear your uh, hear the podcast every other week or so. But there's a lot that happens um, from a d- production standpoint, um, editing and getting episodes up, and um, you know, <laughs> even just becoming a better or, or a faster podcast editor <laughs> yes <laughs> like I have this very random skill now <laughs> mm-hmm. um and also just of like keeping episodes going and flowing and um it's been a wild ride uh for me as an individual and like I'm so 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 glad that in the times where I have felt like uh I don't know if I can keep going I don't know if I can keep doing this that I powered through or mm-hmm. ha- was able to give myself a break and then keep going. Yeah. Um, because the podcast has truly been such a an enormous part of my life and a truly, truly special project that I just, I can't envision a life without it now. Mm-hmm. And um, I can't wait to keep geeking out with everyone for another 100 episodes. Oh, beautifully said. The podcast has grown so much and we've grown along with it. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. So thank you everyone for listening and sticking around for a hundred episodes. Um, you can hear even more episodes <laughs> at patreon.com slash fanimated. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to the fanimated crew over there that supports the show, keeps it running. It's thanks to you that I don't have to worry about all of those 
nasty little upload fees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you guys are keeping things going. Um, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube at Fanimated Podcast. Definitely shoot me a DM and chat with me. Um, I love, love, love to geek out with everyone over there. Um, and you can leave us a rating and review telling us what you'd like us to watch next. The music is, of course, written by Jamie Krause. And the art is done by myself. You can find my Instagram at CandorDraw. So, Emma, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. This was such a blast. <laughs> it was so fun to hear everyone geeking out and to actually have kind of like a two-way conversation with our listeners. Yeah, my heart is really full right now. <laughs> my heart is full. My eyes are red and watery. <laughs> and um, I just can't wait to share even more episodes that we have coming up with you. Um, so, we're going to let Jax... Lead us out. Animation means a lot to me because it's actually what kind of sparked Kelly and my's relationship uh, as it is today. Uh, we got talking about anime and about cosplay, and that's really kind of how we got where we are right now. Um, I would say my favorite piece of animation is Steven Universe uh, because it means absolutely so much to me. And then uh, followed pretty closely by, you know, anything Ghibli. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm so, so glad that I'm able to be a part of Fanimated. And so, as always, stay tuned and, and stay, stay animated. animated. We're going to talk about... <laughs> Lots of different animation today. Woohoo! Animation Central. That's us. That's it. It's that's that's the new name. New name. Changing the name. <laughs> no longer fanimated. We are Animation Central. Indeed. <laughs> I think it's kind of lame. <laughs> <laughs> I like fanimated way better. <laughs> I, I agree. Fanimated is much cooler. Mm -hmm. I told the story about how like I. It was going to make it uh, Fanimation instead of Fanimated, mm. but Fanimation is the name of, a, I googled it, it's the name of a company that makes ceiling fans. Well, that's lame. <laughs> <laughs> Fanimation. Uh, so, th I see. thus we are Fanimated. I'm glad. Me too. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. we're Fanimated.